Welcome back to another video on this channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking all about Western fence lizards and how to care for them. First, let's talk about how big they get and how to determine their gender. Right out of the egg, they'll be 1.5 inches to two inches, including the tail. And then when they're adults, the females would be from six to seven inches, and then the males will be from eight to eight and a half inches. For my Western fence lizards, I use a 60 quart tub, which is equivalent to 20 gallons. Now, if you're gonna use a tub like I do, then you are going to need a lid, not because they can climb up the walls, but because they can jump off of their hides, which we'll get to in a second. And they can jump out of that and then jump out of the thing and you'll probably never see them again. When it comes to substrate for Western fence lizards, I recommend a non-loose substrate because they can get impacted. And impaction is basically where a reptile can't pass or digest what it eats. And it, like, let's say they, eat some of their substrate if it's loose and then it'll just form into a ball in their stomach and then they can't pass that and then they end up dying. Just like bearded dragons, I would recommend at least two hides for western fence lizards. You can give them more places to hide but I say it's only necessary for you to have two. You will need one for the hot side and one for the cold side. If you don't give them two hides, one on the cold, one on the hot, then they will actually get pretty stressed out and they won't come out as often. Western fence lizards are insectivores, which means they only eat insects. They don't eat any other like greens, like bearded dragons or something. So you're probably wondering what is the best insect to feed them? And I would say probably either mealworms or dubia roaches. If you're gonna use dubia roaches, make sure it's the little baby ones or small ones. Uh, make sure it's a little smaller than their head so they can actually digest it. Like many other reptiles, you will need to dust their insects with calcium. The calcium I recommend is calcium with D3. This stuff is very good for reptiles. I use this with my bearded dragon. If you have a leopard gecko, you use this and multivitamin, you mix it together. Um, for western fence lizards, they don't need any multivitamin, they just need um, calcium with D3. This section is probably the shortest one. Uh, just put a water dish in their enclosure, fill it up with water daily, uh, change it out. With reptiles, you want to use safe water, like water that you would drink. You don't want to use tap water because it can have some bad chemicals in it sometimes. The other option would be this thing called Reptisafe. You just pour some droplets into there and then it'll actually clean out the water and then it's safe for your reptile to drink. Also make sure they can get in and out of their water bowl very easily so they don't drown. Western fence lizards are actually pretty flighty. You might not think so, but they can move very fast. I actually have a leash looking thing right here with me because he likes to try to jump out of my hand and especially when you first catch them, they'll be very flighty. If you work with them 15 to 30 minutes a day, they will tame down. Just make sure you're consistent with it or else they will go back to their natural ways and jump out of your hand and everything. But right now, as you can see, he's not moving, but he's just waiting for the moment that I release my grip, which isn't that hard by the way. When I release my grip, and then he'll try to jump off of my hand and run away. In the wild, western fence lizards bask in the sun. Therefore, you will need a heat lamp rather than a heat mat or under tank heater. The temperature of the heat lamp should be from 98 to 105 degrees. You'll find these guys basking on cement, logs, and other things in the wild in like 100 degree weather. On top of that, you will need a UVB lamp. This one is from Zoomed, and I recommend a 10 watt lamp rather than like a five watt or like even lower than that. Uh, they do need quite a bit of UVB. Your UVB light should be around 
one third of the enclosure or one fourth of the enclosure. So I would suggest putting it at the back of it so they can get UVB throughout their enclosure, not just on one side. I currently do not know of any Western Fence Lizard breeders, so you'll have to go out and catch them on your own. One more thing, if you are feeding them mealworms, I do suggest using something like this. This is just a cap of a freeze-dried cricket container, and they, they can't crawl out of here. It's good so the mealworms don't crawl under your non-loose substrate and just hide under there and die. And that's it. Thank you guys for watching so much. Thank you for watching all of my videos. I think we hit 30 subscribers as of filming this video right now. So just thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video.